Hey, welcome back, Akron fans, and we are here with match on Mantanier Transfer. This one is going to be between Nail and Ferreter. So Nail is in the northeast corner of the map. He is probably choosing. Oh, he chooses. CISO. He chooses random most of the time, as far as I understand. So he's just he's been chosen to play CISO. Ferret, on the other hand, choosing to play Grekum, and we know this is his main race. He played it in tournament. He plays it all the time. So he's definitely playing what he's comfortable with. While Nail is playing random, though Nail has played enough that I'm sure he's comfortable with all the races or species, I should say. He's comfortable with all the species equally, very likely. And moving out, just scouting out towards expansion. Looks like one of his marines likely to take the northwest expansion. Well, the special ops going straight to scout out in Ferreter's main. And Ferreter is going to be building up an economy. He is getting his first few octaves up. One of his octaves going out to scout. And other than that, it's going to be just... Looks like probably going to be a pretty standard opener with economy. And then building up from there into tech, then military. No major rushes likely. And we saw the Cratoria match that did happen. There were major rushes. But Mantanier transfer is bit more linear than Kratoria in the way it's laid out, so I mean, it's possible that there might be a proxy. There ha we have seen proxy games on Mantanier using the natural expansion, your opponent's natural, and building up there and attacking from there. And there are quite a few places to proxy up. There's over in the northwest corner and the southeast corner here, any of the expansions. And if you're Grekman, you can actually proxy up on these little hills over here. Your opponent's likely not to notice. But other than that, it doesn't look likely that anything particularly crazy is going to be happening in this game. Ferreter and Nail, their Octo's, their Octo and Special Ops meeting up. Octo just barely winning, and the Octo will be able to scout out. So Nail will probably want to move the Special Ops around through this hill area here in order to avoid the Octo entirely, since he can't win that fight. But he doesn't appear to be planning on doing that. Looks like he is instead just building up an importer, and from there will be able to get a factory up pretty quickly and have ATHCs going. So ATHCs will likely be his main scout force, while Ferreter getting in with the Octo will be able to see what's going on. And at this point not seeing anything yet, nothing has propagated from what Nail has done thus far. Nail doesn't really have to worry though, Ferreter only going for economy. And this Marine here, I'm curious how long it will take before it starts doing something interesting, or proxy or anything. And Ferreter Thinks he's destroyed Nail's base. He hasn't, obviously. Nail's going to be going back and dealing with that. Nail's just double-checking what's happening at the 5-minute mark before going back to the 2-minute mark and dealing with what he can. Like I said, really not sure if he's going to move the Special Ops into a better path so it avoids the Octo entirely. Or we're just assuming that Ferret is going to echo out that Octo Scout. And it looks like Ferret not likely to echo that out. He appears to be committed to that scouting force. Which is fine, just getting rid of... Well, I'm not getting a quarter, but seeing what's going on. Seeing if Nail does build a factory. Nail has the money to do so at this point in time, but back at the two-minute mark when it actually matters for Nail, is he using it? And it doesn't look like he actually is. Not yet. Anyway, he's building up a bit more economy, getting another RP up, and other than that, he just has his economy and his importer, in case he wants to build more infantry, I suppose. But right now, that's all he can build. But I heard a construction sound, and he is building a proxy factory, actually. He's building one over in the northwest base. This will be not as powerful as a proxy in this natural would have been, but still useful as a proxy. So this factory, at the very least, is going to be hard to deal with for Ferreter, but right now Ferreter really doesn't have to worry about it. He can just tear apart this armory, I mean this importer, and then the armory if he wants to, with Octos. The factory is rather out of the way. It can't easily come in. The ATCs can't quickly easily come in and deal with the Octos. The Octos are a really good position to deal with this, although the Marine can help out. This Marine is... looks like they're newly built Marines to deal with everything going on here. And the Special Ops has been killed at this point. Nail not bothering to save it. Or... no, he must have saved it because I did not see... Oh, there's the Special Ops. Okay, so he has actually echoed it out, moved it back, avoided attacking with it at all because you don't see any damage on the timeline from that Special Ops. The only damage is coming in from what Ferreter was doing right near the present, which is... Something we're going to see right now with the Octo coming in, and will, will, will it be able to take out anything, do any serious damage? And no, not really. This Marine's going to be able to take care of it too quickly. Dealing what damage it can to the Importer, only be able to get out halfway dead before it dies itself. So two Octos would have been good, but one Octo not sufficient for dealing with this. And this factory here will actually be up in time to use 
for anything useful. That the Octo won't be able to deal enough damage to the main base. Special Ops Marine will be able to take care of it. And like I said, another Marine going over to the southeast. From there, that should be actually pretty effective. So that Octo, like I said, getting the Importer down to about half health, but no more. Nail, on the other hand, will be building up ATHCs and just ATHCs. Actually building up a small expansion here as well. Likely to turn this into an entire base, just a whole secondary base over the northwest. I mean, it's, to be fair, it is a little bit iffy to call it a proxy because it is a corner base. I mean, it's closer to Ferrer than it is to Nail, but it's still just an expansion. It is a pretty easy expansion to take right off the bat. I mean, this is the natural sort of by distance, but in terms of ease of defense, this base is actually pretty good. You only have two entrances to it, and it's really easy to overlook it, have high ground. Not that high ground advantage means a whole lot in Akron other than just vision. Units can't easily see up hills, but that still counts for something, or can in many situations. Anyway, Octobot up for Ferritor, so he will be able to defend against an ATC rush should it occur, though I don't think Nail is going to be going for that. I think Nail might scout with the ATC to see what's up, but other than that, I don't imagine he's going to be going for too much else. And an Octo being set up for, by Ferritor, so Ferritor preparing himself for a nice little uppercut with the Octo, or not just uppercut, but just a delayed attack. I'm not sure if Nail is prepping himself for that too. He does have a bookmark that we'll have to keep an eye on. That bookmark there will likely be when when that hits the unplayable pass, it's likely when he's going to go back and attack with something. I'm not entirely sure what, because he doesn't have anything set up by the time that bookmark comes along. But he does have machinery coming up, so interesting choice. I don't know if he's going to go for tanks or anything. I, last time I saw machinery here was with J Raccoon, and he just built it for just in case. He did build tanks eventually, but. As I mentioned in that game, machinery is really important to build as a thing to build when you actually want to build machinery units right away. And Ferritor also has advanced structures back when he is, or up when he is actually. Getting advanced structures, we'll be able to build up from there into air units, while Nail slightly ahead actually. He's, he has a lot of economy at this point, and he has machinery coming up as well. If he gets tanks up, that'll actually be very powerful. And it looks like, no, he's using machinery for defense turrets instead. Also a decent idea. This base is far enough away that it could work. And like I said, it's also a defensible base. Though I'm not... Well, turret here. Yeah, sure. That, that would work. Turrets will be able to get through anything going up here. And I'm pretty sure it... I'm not sure if we can shoot through the factory. I kind of doubt it. I'm pretty sure the factory does block line of sight. So there's an area here that's still a blind spot from this turret. But another turret coming up. So at least this opening here is going to be protected pretty well. And Ferritor is... Oh, okay. Ferritor now has, at the 6.33 mark, he has advanced structures. Getting a Pharopod up could easily probably get a second fairly soon. He's getting more RPs as well on QP, so we, get QP, so we can easily get a second Pharopod. He can easily support more air units. Really good idea to do. Nail swimming in Liquid Crystal, but not building all... Well, he's building a lot back here, but he is still swimming in Liquid Crystal. And another factor really in his main base. This one probably... Uh, I would build tanks here and use this for either ATHCs or... I suppose you could use it for tanks as well. It's just the only problem is tanks are slower units than ATHCs are. And losing his special ops to the Octo. The Octo ultimately kills that special ops. Ultimately succeeded in its goal of actually killing it. But it dies in the process. It gave its life to kill its sworn enemy. Well, we know it was a sworn enemy. It was in one iteration a sworn enemy. And then it wasn't, and now it died. Now they die together. And where's that Pharopod? At the 7.33 mark, we should be seeing a Pharopod from Faraday. He had built one around the 7 minute mark, but it looks like he's changed around his spending. Nope, he has, never mind. He has a Pharopod right here. I'm just blind. It's right here. It's pretty. No, sort of pretty. It's actually kind of terrifyingly ugly. I mean, it's it's not meant to be pretty. It's meant to be a horrifying war machine. And Nail, on the other hand, not got a lot of horrifying war machines on his end. He you know, has some mechs, he has some turrets, but no tanks being built up, which I'd really suggest. Or Tornaz actually would be an even better idea. Admittedly, they are kind of expensive, but still, 
Tornods would be a good idea right now. He is getting some QPRPs, which will help him afford that. But at this point, not dealing with that. Turret taking care of an Octo that had come in and tried to take out what he had. Actually, it looks like... No, Sebi Faro Pair. Sebi Faro Pair that's coming in trying to expand here as well. So Ferreter well aware of what Nail has done. And not aware of this Marine here. Just as a Faro Pod to... Well, scout it up. But he didn't actually see the Marine with the Faro Pod when he had the chance. And... That Seppi is... Oh, the fire just gone. Killed. Seppi is going down at the 933 mark. Nail at the 6 minute... Or 730 mark. Is he building anything? Because if he is not, I'll be very surprised. He has no money with which to build, so never mind. He is only getting infantry from here on out. Likely to get tanks pretty soon, but he has made use of machinery. The turrets actually did come in handy. So he is making use of it. About to build it. Trying to build a macrofab. And this Seppi going down. The mech able to survive that assault. And it looks like Nail's going to be building a macro as soon as he gets the Q-Plasma for it, which is now. So I expect that. And I'm building a factory, but the Farpod's spotting it, so... Ferret are well aware of the Farpod. And the Farpod actually not cloaked, by the way. The Farpod is fully visible. It's just hanging out, not bothering to use his cloak at all. And with no more Farpods coming in, I'm not sure if Ferret is going for chronoporting. He probably would be. It's a likely strategy. But it looks like more likely he is instead just trying to expand out and then build up from there, get a nice economy going. While well, Sfarabod goes off to explore, figure out if Nail's anything else, anything in the center of the map. He does have a marine set up in the north expansion in the center to build up, but he has not actually taken advantage of that yet. And where has Nail set himself up from here? Sorry, Ferret are getting Octopods up. Nail has nothing in his natural expansion that the Farpod is checking for, and finds nothing. Well, the Farbot is able to at least scare Nail away from using that expansion. And it looks like the Marine is going towards the natural. Nail is likely to lose it. Yes, he is in fact getting that Marine attacked by the Farbot and will be losing it fairly shortly. But it doesn't matter. The Macrofab is the main thing. This Northwest base is what Nail is focusing on for everything. So if he loses stuff in his natural expansion, it's not a big deal. His main base is important economically, but other than that, anything else he gets is a bonus. Right now, he has a major economic advantage over Ferreter. Though Ferret has a bit of a tech advantage. If Nail starts building up what he has, though, that's going to be huge. And Ferreter, his main advantage economically is going to be Q-Plasma for the next little while. But now that Nail has actually an equal amount of Q-Plasma RPs, it should even out. So Ferreter is going to be in a bit of trouble. He has enough defense in his main base. His main base is fine. But he doesn't have a lot of ways of protecting force at this point. So Nail can pretty much take the map unless... I mean, if this expansion gets up without a hit, she'll be able, Ferret will be able to afford chronoporting and just generally other stuff. And grounding weapons as well, so I expect Mar tanks and Twin Mars coming up very soon. A frigate is coming up. This does not require machinery, by the way. It's just something you can build right off the bat. And another macrofab in the main base. So Nail building up both bases pretty much equally. And one of his LC curates has been completely eaten up. His other two LC crates are still good to go for a little while, only about a third done. And building QP, and right in the playable pass, we see the Farpod has been destroyed by this turret. So, Ferreter losing his ability to actually deal any real damage. Nail very wisely placing that turret where he placed it. But, at the same time, Octobot's coming in to Nail's expansion. Nail's really important expansion. Ferreter trying to assault that, take it down before it gets too big, and he might be able to do that. Enough Octopods from the looks of it. And weaponry being researched as well, so Ferreter is going to need a fair amount of money in order to make this work. And he does not have that much money. He's going to need 200, 200 LC and 200 QP in order to fire off a plasma cruise missile. And I don't know how well that will work because these turrets here w should be able to shoot it down. However, a well-placed one might be able to take care of the RPs and at least give Ferreter some breathing room to get back into the game. Because Ferreter right now has been on the ropes for some time and he's actually building up this... Well, he can't really build up RPs from here because he's spending all his money on weaponry and then using that to build up to spend all his money on his, well, on his plasma cruise missile that he's going to be able to fire off pretty soon. Once that gets shot off, then we'll see what happens, but that's going to be, that's a real big gamble, and I really wouldn't have suggested doing that. I honestly would have suggested just using that money to build up a bunch of RPs and work from there. So, right now, Ferreter just prepping for an attack, looks like he's waiting for the unplayable pass edge so he can attack without Nail being able to change himself up. And Nail going for a lot of lots of frigates. I 
guess he expects more Arians to come in. He doesn't expect for Ferdor to go for so many Octopods, and that's a fair expectation. Grekum usually doesn't go for ground as much as they do here. Usually you see a lot of Sepipods and Farpods and then building into Sepi Legos. But at this point, Ferdor is in fact not doing that, and he has the money. At the 12 minute mark, he will have the money to fire off a Plasma Cruise Missile, so I'm guessing he might. I'm guessing he's going to do that right before he actually goes for the assault. However, he is building up RPs as well. This expansion is being built up. So the assault should be a nice distraction. Asebibot has been built, by the way, but that's not his main force. So these frigates are not actually that useful. Nail, Nail can do some raiding with them, but that's about it. They're not actually going to be that useful for defense against the Octopods here. They're going to be somewhat useful. They're not, they're not useless against ground, but they aren't... Actually, I'm going to think of it. They're about as powerful against ground as... Or say, slightly more powerful against ground than Octopods are against air, but they're also considerably frailer. And Sepibod will be able to take care of what looks like it was a mech that came in to try to take this area down. Yeah, a mech was coming up to try to build a turret here. So Nail really building up a lot of defenses around the map. And here come the Octopods! The Octopods are actually came in about a minute down from here. Fair to deal with damage it can, and the frigate's getting out of the way, but it looks like a couple of them have actually not even built yet. The Octopods coming in before most of them get built. Those one of the frigates that is here is going down, but most of the RPs are going down, so Nail losing part of the economic advantage that he had. And that's gonna be a bit painful. While Ferdor not building up too much with what he has at this point, he does have a reef, he does have Well, he's getting the resources to fire off missiles if he wants to, but he hasn't actually used it yet. And the Octopods dealing quite a bit of damage. So they've gotten rid of about three RPs thus far, and it looks like they're they're poised to get rid of more. This macro will be slowing them down though, but not as much as one would think. Not as much as it used to. It's the health has been dropped quite a lot in the recent patches, so certainly less of a roadblock than it used to be. And Nail can't really do too much against this. He has some units built up, but his main base is where he's really focused on getting his anti-ground units, getting the Mar tanks and having them set up to merge into Twin Mars, and that will be very scary to deal with. I think. That's probably why he's building the frigates, because the frigates would allow him to control the skies, because one of the easiest ways to get rid of Twin Mars is air units. And if he controlled the skies, Ferdor wouldn't be able to actually take care of that. But Ferdor not worried too much about that, just worried about taking care of this base here, and keeping Nail... Well, keeping Nail in check economically, because at this point Nail's had an economic advantage almost this entire game. While Ferdor just building up his expansion, getting a couple reefs to help support that and help heal it up if anything gets damaged, but at this point, Frigate's coming in, trying to take care of the Sepipod. Sepipod will be able to take care of the Frigate, no problem. But that, but if both Frigates come in, I, that's not going to be easy, but I think it looks like Nail has lost both Frigates to the Octopods. So Nail right now, really in a tight spot, getting, he has his Twin Mars up, both Twin Mars, and getting more Frigates up as well, so he's going to be still going for the strategy from the looks of it. Which once, well okay, sorry, the turrets are why he had machinery, so that was not a bad idea. Might be building too many, though. Turrets are not that powerful in Akron. They're somewhat powerful. They were, as we saw, useful against Farapods. Against single forces trying to raid against you, they are quite handy. But in general, they aren't as useful as an army would be for the cost. Still, raiding defense is very handy. It's always good to have that. You always want to make sure that your opponent isn't going to be able to just come in with a Farapod or with a Shinter. Well, not Shinter so much, but with Lancers or... I guess Shin Turcher would be the best example. Or Zion Turchers coming in and just dealing with what you have. You you want to make sure that they have to work a little bit for it. Because otherwise, it's kind of... I mean, that's kind of tough to deal with, really. I mean, you're, you're trying to trying to deal with all this stuff across the timeline, and then your opponent comes in the unplayable pass and just rips apart your main base, and now you're done. Having defense turrets like that can be really handy. And like everything else, their range and sight range is being increased in the next version. So that actually probably will be quite a bit more useful in the next version, since they'll be able to better able to deal with things, and you well, won't have to have as many in a base in order for it to be useful. Especially for Vecchio, since Bastions require a foundation to be built, so them having much longer range is going to be extremely helpful for Vecchio. And let's see, this RP not doing too much here. So Ferrer is actually... Let's see, he's coming back. He's dealing a lot of damage to the Octopods. This... These pair of Twin Mars here is going to be the biggest thing that Nail has going for him when it comes to Assault. And they are moving out to take care of the Octopods. These Octopods will be going down. Ferdor needs to use the money he has either fire off some Plasma Cruise Missiles or build up some you know, Farapods and Sepipods. Sepipods and Frigates and Farapods or everything else. 
these Octopods are going to be torn up to shreds by the Twin Mars. And an ATC coming in as well just for protection in case. Very wise to bring that along. But yeah, this Octopod is going to be going down. Get, getting one shot off. That's it. That's the thing. Twin Mars are very scary forces. You do not want to mess with them if you don't have to. So that's going to be something that's basically going to tear apart everything Ferreter has. Ferreter trying to get rid of this frigate before he loses the Octopods, though. And if he does that, yes, he will be able to use a Fire Pod from here to take care of everything he has. But it doesn't look like Fire Pods are forthcoming. No, Ferreter is, in fact, getting Chronoporting. Very iffy idea. He might, It might work. This might actually work. Ferreter still has enough money to build up an army to use it with. So he builds up Firebots from here. He will be able to make use of Chronoporting. And these Twin Mars haven't moved around and found the other bases yet. Frigate's likely to be coming up from Nail. N Nail, I'm sure he's going to be building more of them. And he is going to be getting Gate Tech as well. So both players getting Chronoporting potential at the same time in the 18 minute mark. And I'm not sure which one's going to be done sooner, though. Nail needs to set up more. Ferreter can just Chronoport as soon as he gets the chance, but. That chance is not there. He doesn't have any units with which to Chronoport. His Far Pods haven't been built yet. He's building one. He is building a Far Pod. Not up yet, though. Once it is, we'll be able to Chronoport back and help deal with the Twin Mars. But that is not the case right now. The Twin Mars moving back to base, not assaulting with them. Probably waiting for a frigate to be built up to help deal with any Aryans that might come in. But. Or, rather, waiting for a Chronoporter and Teleporter to come in, so they can just be Chronoported back and deal even more damage. So expect lots and lots of uppercuts to be coming up fairly soon. And Legal Class as well, so Sipid Legal is coming up. There is a Frigate coming in here, which is going down, but now Nail well aware of what Ferreter is up to. And Ferreter is going to be in a bit of a trouble now. Now that Nail knows where his base has been, he can just chronoport back these units, and that's going to be very hard to deal with. It looks like there's going to be... It's, it's going to be tough. There's going to be an uppercut here. It's going to be very powerful. And that is going to be extremely difficult for Ferreter to deal with. And Ferreter, that's his entire economy at this point. These far pots, however, are up in position. So really what he needs to do is... I don't think he can assault the assault that came in earlier. This is when... There was an assault earlier that was on the north side of the map where the Octopods were destroyed. I think that's the only area that Ferreter can deal some damage. No, not even then. Ferreter didn't even deal damage there. So yes, this is... That is out of reach. So he can't actually kill the Twin Mars easily. He's going to have to use a Chronoport of Defense in order to deal with this. And teleporting in. No, not Chronoporting in. Just teleporting in. MFB as well. So Nail supporting everything as, as best he can. Really nice to see that too. I don't really see MFBs much. Very glad to see that being built. More Martanks coming up. Nail not actually assaulting quite yet, just prepping. Setting up all of his units so that he can assault when he wants to, but now is not that moment. Now is the moment where Ferreter is going to be building up what he has, and that Ferreter is going to be building up what he has. And yeah, these guys are still in position, but Ferreter moving out with the Fire Pods, taking care of everything that Nail has built up. This is about a minute up from when Nail is, so Nail still has plenty of time to defend. Ferreter jumping back. Nail at the 20 minute mark. Nail is building up the Martank I mentioned before. He has a frigate up, but it's very weak. Won't be able to take care of the Pharopods. And the Pharopods doing what they can to these ground forces, but Nail, he might have something up his sleeve. I don't think he does, though, and it looks like he's actually quite surprised by the number of Pharopods that have been built up to fight him off. And Ferreter is... Oh boy. Ferreter is basically... has this game in the bag. These Pharopods, along with the Corona Porting that he has, Nail might build up I don't know if he's going to be able to anything. He's not got much going on. These teleporters went over and sent everything over here, but it looks like other than that, he's not actually got anything to defend. These far pods, and these far pods are going to just tear apart everything. I think that Nail, once his main base is assaulted, he's going to just surrender. And Ferreter, when is he going to chronoport? I'm not sure. These guys can... They can all chronoport. Ferreter has the money to do that. And instead of coming in the main base, seeing there are still defense turrets there that he has to deal with. He might go for an assault and then try to duplicate it. So he sends in the fire pods and then retreats them out and then chronoports them back and then sends in double the number of fire pods. We might be seeing that, but no, Nail actually coming in! Nail, oh, from his point of view, at the 21 minute mark, coming in to assault Ferreter's base, Ferreter's big base, but a plasma cruise missile being sent to destroy this, so Ferreter will be eliminating these guys 
pretty easily with Plasma Cruise Missile. Where did that go? I thought he sent it over to destroy this army, but I don't see it actually having exploded. We can see it had chronoported back. So I don't know what's happening with it. These fire pots, however, can just chronoport back and... Oh, they can't, actually. He's run out... Was that... Oh, no, that's the reef to fire off Plasma Cruise Missile. So he doesn't have money for it, but he has fired it off. There we go. Twinmar is the only thing left. One weakened Twinmar. Everything else being destroyed by the cruise missile. And Nail, his main base is the only bastion he has left. Ferrer having built up quite a bit of resources around the map. He's built up a lot of RPs around the map. And of course he has his army so he can still protect force around the map. And this is pretty close to the end. But this one Twinmar is still doing a lot of damage. And Nail just checking what happened before. Oh wait. No, something's changed here. This is... Oh no, sorry, I'm looking at Ferret's point of view. Ferret's point of view is further than the future. From Nail's point of view, it was the destruction of that force. So yeah, Corner pointing back to Sepipod to help deal with everything going on here. And Sepipod gets almost killed by everything going on, but just able to heal enough from that reef that... I cannot believe that reef just saved that Sepipod there. But yeah, so that just happened. So Ferreter able to take care of that pretty easily. Just needs to go and destroy the main base at this point. He has enough money. He has enough money to chronoport back these forces. He has enough money if he wants to to send off another cruise missile. Though I think the chronoporting, actually, I'm not sure which would be more effective at this point. Chronoporting would probably be just as effective as it would be to straight up attack. However, attacking as soon as possible would be good because the chronoporter is coming up. Nail's going to try as best to save this to bootstrap this in, but I don't think he's going to be able to manage it. I don't think he has enough time. I think it's been more than three minutes since the attack happened. Yeah, because the attack happened here. So yes, Nail is not able to actually deal with that. And here come the Pharopods for the final assault. Hitting that Chronoporter, dealing a lot of damage, being spread out between the mobile field base and everything else. That turret is able to take care of a lot of the frigates, able to take care of the rest. So these Pharopods will not do too well on their own, unfortunately. But that Chronoporter not being built ultimately it looks like Nail got that MFB in the way of the Chronoporter. So Nail not able to build that up which is unfortunate, but at this point, like I said, Ferreter pretty much had this. Where is... Oh, well, there was a Chrono Port departure here. So, Ferreter is looking like he's probably sending off a cruise missile as well. No, not a cruise missile, just sending back... Well... No, he might be sending back a cruise, cruise missile, but he did... Chrono Port back, another semi-pod. That's what Chrono Port back. I was wondering what happened. So yeah, Sepipod is going back and will be helping out here, but really Nail, his main base is just a matter of time before he loses it. And that Sepipod just going back to help get rid of the Marine to stop Nail from expanding into Ferreter's main. And like I said, the Sepipod that helped out to defend, able to be healed up by the Reef, and just that, that is surprising. Okay, so Nail acknowledging he's probably lost. Farbot's coming in here, finally one last pass, taking care of everything that happened. It looks like... Well, is, is there a paradox? I, I don't think there is a paradox. I think Nail just having to move his force in such a way that ultimately they dealt enough damage to take, take care of everything. Ferreter, I don't believe he chronoported back any pause to deal with this. Let's see if there's an arrival here. There is a departure of a Sepipod, but that was to help defend the expansion. So these pods able... I don't know, there was, was there a paradox? Well, I guess there was. Looks like stuff is changing on the blue time wave. So, Ferret are not quite winning yet, but still dealing a lot of damage. Between oh, Plasma Cruise Missile. Of course, that's what did it. So, Nail basically losing all the forces to a Plasma Cruise Missile back in the Unplayable Past. And that allowed these Fire Pots to take care of everything else. So, that was one time where weaponry actually really did pay off. I gotta say, I'm impressed. Because, as I mentioned before, weaponry is one of those really, really, really risky techs. Trying to get it is... It's a lot of money to get, it's a lot of money to use, and if you use it, you gotta be careful that you use it in the right spot so that your opponent's army actually gets destroyed. But if it works, it works extremely well. And yeah, here Nail just checking what he had, but... No, that green time of not changing anything. There's the cruise missile, blows up everything that was in the base, and... That's it. Farpaw is able to take care of everything else with impunity. And really, Ferreter can just send off another if he wants to, or send off 
more fire pods. Chrono pours them back here if he wants. He's not doing that, by the way. He's not actually building up anything at this point. He has some construction in the future, but that's just a couple semi pods and knock or semi pod and knock pod. Looks like he's planning anything Lego class units. Maybe get some far Legos to finish it off, but really he's he's one at this point. Nail is likely to surrender pretty soon once he sees for sure that he has lost this game. Because I mean he has some money to rebuild, but he doesn't have any mechs, he doesn't have any marine No, he has one marine. He has one marine, he is not using it to rebuild yet, though I don't think he's confident he can actually rebuild in time. And anyway, he'd need to make sure that's alive for about seven or eight minutes. Otherwise, Chrono Porting will be able to just tear it apart. Oh, and Cronhaber actually mentioning in chat, he thought the PCM got paradoxed. However, ultimately it worked out as you see this giant damage spike here, that the PCM did actually deal the damage it was meant to, though I'm fairly certain that PCM was causally consistent. I don't... I didn't notice any paradoxing occur without any changes to the Chrono Ports. I, and the PCM that happened here wasn't paradoxed, it was just... When I looked at that, that was the wrong point in time that I was looking at. But Nail... Like I said, he has pretty much lost this game. He's not building up anything from this point on. Ferreter has built up a bit more in the future, but I'm not sure what Nail is waiting for. Oh, because this far pod's actually in a really bad position. It's not damaging anything. It's trying to get the resource processor, but the empty container is in the way. And this... Okay. I'm not supposed to focus on bugs. I think it might be fixed in the next version. I'm not sure. But anyway, the game is pretty much over. Another PCM... Or another Chrono Bomb coming in to Chronobomb's own RPs? What? That was bizarre. Why, why did Ferret or Chronobomb's own RPs? I, I don't understand what's going on here. And... Nail is... Ah, right, now he's finally taking damage. He's moving his RPs away. Actually taking damage at this point from Ferret. But not rebuilding anything. This Marine isn't being doing, doing anything, so... Yeah, I think Nail has basically lost the game. There's not much more to say about it. So I'll just finish off here. And hope you enjoyed that. So I'll be back with one more game before I finish for tonight. So stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment.